Hello, and welcome to Rock Your Block, where we highlight individuals who impact our community. I'm your host, Larry Laws. On today's segment of First Home Alliance, we have the honor to highlight an amazing and truly remarkable person. In my words, Superwoman. She's a Chicago native, disabled Army veteran, and cable cancer survivor, dedicated over 17 years of service to her nation. She served on Operation Iraq Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom, advocating for soldiers and their families. In 2005, as a single parent in the Army Reserve, she faced Hurricane Katrina devastation. Short, shortly after, she received a life-changing cancer diagnosis, preventing her from deploying. Facing limited options and no support for female veterans with children, Jazz resolved to make a difference. Real, relocating to Missouri, she joined the Army National Guard and later accepted a full-time position in Washington, D.C. Yet her commitment to fellow sister veterans remained standfast. In 2010, she formed Final Salute Incorporated, assisting over 8,000 women veterans and children in 30 plus states and territories. That includes over 18,000 transitional housing days. Jazz holds a BA in Mass Communications and dual MAs in Human Resource Management and Management and Leadership. She's featured in the 2017 documentary, Served Like a Girl, a mother of two boys and a wife to a Marine combat veteran, Jazz continues her mission to support and empower women veterans. Please welcome to our show, founder and president of Final Salute, Inc., Major Jazz Booth. Welcome to the show, Jazz. Hi, Larry, how are you? All right, yes, fine. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us here today. Thank you. Yes, so uh, Jazz, I want to uh, really, uh, our audience to get to know you. Tell us a little bit about who is Jazz. Um, I would say I, I'm a survivor and I'm an, I'm an advocate. Um, definitely had some trials and tribulations, but I wouldn't say that any of them got the best of me. They just ta taught me some lessons along the way and just made me a stronger person. Yes, and uh, you do not stand alone. I mean, uh, you have a family, uh, uh, and so uh, how are the boys? The boys are great. Uh, my boys are, are 28 and 13. My oldest uh, served in the Air Force, and um, my husband is a Marine Corps combat veteran, and so we have a very thick tradition of military service in our family. Yes, it seemed like everyone has to put the uniform on. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that is great. That is great. And um, so, Jess, so um, tell us about, uh, you was in the Army, correct? You know, uh, how was it serving? It was truly an honor to serve. It's always, you know, an honor to be in service of something greater uh, than yourself. I, I served for 17 years, was able to loot, lead troops, and just, you know, it gave me a, a better life than I could have ever imagined. You know, I was born and raised in Chicago. Um, I, I grew up in the projects, you know, so that wasn't a, a life that I had ever imagined. It, and allow me to give my, my children a better life. And so for me, it was just an honor to serve and just be able to, you know, help and support other people and uplift them. Yes, okay. And, uh, and so not only you served in the state, uh, state side of CONUS, but you also uh, uh, have actually deployed. Yes, I had a, a great deployment. Um, and it, it's, you know, you serve state side and you serve troops that you have on your left and right, but to go to other countries and to be of service to people that you would have never met and what it means to be an American soldier to other people is an even greater calling. And so for me, uh, being a soldier just gave me a, an exponential experience that I would have never helped with any other profession had I picked it. Uh, great, great. And so uh, I understand uh, in the military uh, with your service, but also there was uh, a devastation with uh, Katrina. Uh, and what was some of the things that fall out from that? Um, I mean, p many people have called um, Hurricane Katrina the, the, the perfect storm. Um, so it definitely caused me um, a great setback because I lost everything that I owned. And at the time, it was just me and my son. And it was at the time that I got the call to serve in Iraq. And so for me, there was nothing I could really do about the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. But 30 days later, I got my head, neck, and throat cancer diagnosis. So I lost everything I owned. And then I was in the second fight of, of uh, biggest battle of my life actually fighting for my life. And so I was really between a rock and a hard place where I didn't have a home and I couldn't deploy, which left me without a job. And then I really couldn't advocate the VA system in a productive way because I was a woman veteran. 
Yes, and so uh, tell us about some of the, uh, the challenges in facing in, in getting those services, uh, you know, uh, in reference to housing and some of the other benefits. The, the biggest obstacle was that at that time the VA did not have supportive housing services or transitional housing for women veterans. Everything was still very male dominant. And so that let me know that the, our country was still not set up to receive women veterans in the way that they were um, our brothers and that we were not as seen as equitable in the way that we served and sacrificed. And so that led me to my advocacy after I fully rehabilitated. Yes, and so, you know, uh, I've been around the uh, situation with housing and actually accounting for homeless, and a lot of us don't know the definition of homeless, you know, but it, you was actually homeless at one time. Yes, and so after leaving the hospital, after beating cancer, um, I ended up sleeping on my aunt's couch, and that's one of the, the obstacles because the federal definition of homelessness does not take into account women veterans who couch surf. Um, they're like, well, if you're in a home, then you're not homeless. But my name wasn't on the lease. I didn't have a mortgage. So, you know, that's not your property. Correct. Luckily, my aunt is someone who supported me and loved me, so she wouldn't put me out on the street. But as you know, everybody is not that fortunate to have such a strong support system. Yes, and I really appreciate you sharing that because there, there are a lot of female, uh, not only male, uh, male, f females, males as well, but more, a, lot of, a larger number of females that are not on a mortgage or a lease, and they're actually homeless. Yes. Yes. And so um, with that uh, drive, uh, what drove, what was the m driving force to establish the organization, Final Salute? I would say the driving force is, you know, when I took my oath to never leave a fallen comrade um, as a soldier, that didn't stop once I left the military. And so for me, I wanted to continue to honor that oath, you know, once I took my uniform off because I saw that the situation was not getting better. And I know many of us as Americans, we often see something bad that's happening and we say, you know, somebody needs to do something about that. Well, the military didn't teach us to be bypassers in anything that's going wrong. So for me, I understood that to be my next mission. Yes. Now, your story has also been covered in uh, People magazine. You know, uh, tell us about being recognized. For me, recognition is raising awareness. And for me, every time awareness is raised, I look at that as an opportunity for another woman veteran and her child to get off the street. So I'm always happy when someone takes notice in my story because my story is one story in a sea of stories. So I'm always welcome to be able to raise awareness and get more attention on the bigger problem. Yes, and that's great that, uh, you know, that a person that was in uniform, you know, a sister that served, where you go back and help the other sisters that are served. And even though it's Army, but I understand that you receive recognition from the Secretary of Air Force as well. Yeah, so um, I, I look at us as one big family. In the military, regardless of what service you're in, we're one big sea of services and we are one military family. So regardless of, you know, what uniform you are, once you become a veteran, it's just one big family. And so we reach out. No, no one understands us the way we do. And so I just look at, you know, whatever the recognition comes from, it's all the same family. Yes, that's great. And I see that you actually went back to the Pentagon also and received the Newman's Award. Yes, um, I used to work at the National Guard Bureau and I've had many visits to the Pentagon. So I look at everything as just coming full circle. So whenever the Pentagon calls and say, hey, we want to want to support you, it's like, you know, I used to work just a stone's, a stone's throw away from there. So it's always great for everything to come full circle and also lets me know like the universe is, is telling me that I'm doing the right thing. Yes, and I really think that you're doing the right thing in your in your, your, your right space. You're actually doing a lot of traveling in the area, but you're touching a lot of lives. And so recently you was in Florida. Yes, uh, so one of the ways we advocate is through our largest awareness event called the Misfit in America competition. And it's a national event where women veterans and military women who serve go out and advocate for Final Salute Inc. Um, if they win, they become our national ambassador. And we were just in Orlando um, this month in October um, to do the competition. And the woman who won is actually a Marine Corps veteran. This is the first Marine who's ever won. And now she's out actively raising awareness and advocating. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, now uh, this next award, the recognition, I would say, was someone from your hometown. <laughs> you know, in a, a national uh, a celebrity and well-known person, Oprah Winfrey. Uh, tell us about the recognition that you received. So oddly enough, you ask me how I come to 
uh, start Final Saloon Inc. So once I got through my, my ordeal, I had thought like, you know, well, maybe there's not a lot of women veterans who are in this predicament, so maybe that's why they don't have supportive services for us. But when Oprah was getting ready to go off the air, I caught one of her last shows, and she had a homeless woman veteran that was living out of her trunk. And I said, so this is still the problem? And that's when I was a prize to the um, situation that there were tens of thousands of homeless women veterans on American soil. So I actually watched it on Oprah, went and researched it, and found out it was still a huge problem. And I always talk about these full circle moments. Years later, Oprah found out about what I was doing. Her team reached out to me. And then when she came to DC for her The Life You Want tour, she honored me um, as her DC awardee. Well, that's great. <laughs> well, that's great. You know, someone from a hometown uh, that you're actually in, and she was getting off the air during that time period. That is great. Yes. And uh, congratulations on that award. Thank you. Yes. Well, uh, that's uh, great. Uh, we talked a lot about uh, you're on a national stage, and we're going to talk about some of the things that you're doing here local in our Washington, D.C. area. We'll be right back. We're about to take a short break, but before we go, I would like to mi remind you that First Home Alliance is a HUD-approved housing counseling agency serving the national capital area. If you're a first-time home buyer, a homeowner, and need a mortgage assistance, please visit the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development website to find a HUD-approved agency in your area. We'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching Rock Your Block. I'm your host, Larry Laws, and if you're just now tuning in, we're joined today with founder and president of Final Salute, Major Jazz Booth. Jazz, before the break, we were just uh, talking about your highlight with Oprah, and uh, I want to talk about the first time I met you, uh, and you've been doing this gr great work for a number of years. It was in 2018 at a Thanksgiving dinner there in Alexandria. Tell us how is the Final Salute home, uh, house shelter there in Alexandria is doing. It's doing great. Uh, right now we have a, a mom of five there. Um, the children are doing great. They're thriving there in school. It's just a blessing for them to have a safe haven and you know not have to worry about where their next meal is going to come from or where they have to lay where they have to lay their heads. So I'm very proud of what we've created for them. Yes. And so in the home, tell us a little bit about the program. What uh, what do you provide for the uh, the veterans there? Um, so they um, have housing. the The home there is a um, three-story, 9,000 square foot home. It has eight bedrooms and eight bathrooms. We can provide for 10 women veterans and children at a time. Um, so housing, food, clothing, wraparound supportive services. Each woman that comes there is provided a two-year plan for independence, so they can sit there for a period of up to two years. And based on their individual need, we get, we um, sorry, partner them with our resource partners to see what they need moving forward. Okay, and uh, could you share with us uh, one of the success stories? I mean, you know, it's great to say that we've had so many, but we've had many women that, that come there, you know, making barely a minimum wage and they leave there um, making really great wages and becoming homeowners. Um, and so for me, it's, it's the women that leave there not having to go into other programs. It's the women that come there that had to be separated from their children that can be reunited with their children. So I think every story that comes there and leave there is a success story. Okay. All right. And so some of the other things that you're doing here in the, the DMV, um, what has been going on there in Fairfax? So um, we try to do a baby shower every year. Um, you know, there are a lot of um, moms that are struggling. 
um, sometimes and single moms um, in, in general, and not just single mothers. There are some mothers who are leaving the military. You don't always have you know the best laid plans, and then you know life happens. Life happened to me. Then mm -hmm. you know think about Hurricane Katrina. A lot of people coming through the pandemic. And so we are um, making sure that they can welcome baby with the blessing by giving them car seats, baby clothing, um, pampers, and other basic living essentials to help them have a, a baby blues for when baby comes. Okay. All right. And so, uh, 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 Jess, if you're aware that annually we have an um, awards ceremony, and uh, we understand that you will not be able to attend in person this year. Yeah. And so I would like uh, to present you an award. <laughs> yes, and Thank so uh, Major Jazz Booth, on behalf of First Home Alliance, it's a privilege to present the first of its kind, the 2023 Alliance Medal of Honor Award. Your uh, impeccable service and unwavering dedication to providing critical assistance to our female veterans exemplify the high standards of service and compassion. Your commitment to excellence and support for those who have served is truly exceptional. Your actions have not only improved countless lives, but have also set an inspiring sample for them all, example for them all. Major Booth, your tireless efforts and dedication have not gone unnoticed. We thank you for your service and celebrate your extraordinary contribution to female veterans and to the military community. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. This is absolutely um, amazing, Larry. I want to sincerely and humbly thank you um, and, and First Home Alliance. Um, like I said, any award and accolade is on behalf of the 2.2 million women who have served and sacrificed who don't get the recognition that they have earned. Um, I, am, I am doing the work that I signed up to do as a soldier and my mission continues. Um, women have fought, bled, and some have made the ultimate sacrifice in every major war campaign. Um, women share the soil at our International Cemetery along our brothers, and so we are only asking for what we have rightfully earned, and so that is why I fight so hard for them. Um, you know, we are asking the VA to do our part. I'm sorry, we're asking the VA to do their part, but we as American citizens and also veteran brothers and sisters have to do our part too. And so that's why I'm so dedicated to the mission of Final Salute, Inc. All thank right. you. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Now, Jazz, um, for, uh, for there's female veterans out there now that are listening to you, and what message do you have for them that maybe they haven't called, uh, they, are, uh, they are not listening to some of the messages, but they're sitting there, maybe homeless at this time. What message do you have for them to reach out? I just want them to know that they are not alone. Their, their story is a story that many have, but also to not be ashamed of their situation. You know, life happens to us all. It doesn't happen when we're prepared for it, but there is help and there are people that care about you. And so reach out and get the support that you need. Okay, and Jess, you're actually, uh, I think you're, you're, you're living, you're performing your assignment, you know, and so it's your purpose. And so um, with that, there's individuals that maybe have uh, even a business entrepreneurism that they have not pursued. Uh, matter of fact, uh, the skin pr uh, product, is that something that, uh, 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 something that you design and, uh, and develop there? It is, and so I put together um, Acne Awakening because I think we first as leaders and then especially women that we're always so busy taking care of other people that we don't put our own personal wellness first. And so I created the skincare um, because skin is your, your body's largest organ. And so I wanted to um, ensure that we are taking care of ourselves and I'm always the worst at doing it, especially being a wife and mother, I'm taking care of everybody else. And that's not to mention what I do for my advocacy. And so for me, the first thing you do when you get up is what, wash your face. And so yes. for me, it's me being intentional about my wellness and putting self-care first. And so that's why I decided to launch into skincare. That's great, <laughs> great. And we uh, definitely encourage others to go ahead and do, do and follow their uh, talents and dreams. Okay, and so for someone that need to get more information, uh, where can they find more information? So for more information, they can go to our website at www.finalsaluteinc.org and we're also on Facebook and Twitter. Okay, and also with that, uh, is, are there volunteer opportunities? Yes, we also have a volunteer link and um, a page for events on our website. 
Okay. All right. And so, Jazz, uh, with all these great things, what's on the horizon? What's coming up next? Uh, you know, we're going to continue to um, continue to push out our mission and continue to help women, women veterans. Uh, we'll have some December events coming up where people can people can get involved. I would say the best thing to do is just follow us on our socials and just see what we, what else we have down the line. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Jazz, I want to thank you again for coming in today. And um, we're going to be uh, following you and uh, uh, looking for the other great things that you're doing in our community and also our female veteran community. Thank you, Larry. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Major Jazz Booth. It has been an honor to recognize her accomplishments and gain insight on her experience with the military and her flight to it as a remarkable person doing some amazing things for female veterans. If you would like more information about Jazz, you may find her on social media and check out Final Salute Inc. website for additional information. Now it's time to check our inbox and see how we can help rock your block. This is where we share a recent question sent to us from you, our veteran audience, about financial stability and housing. Today's question comes from Springfield, Virginia. What is the difference between down payment and closing costs? I would like you to think of down payment and closing costs for a house the same as you do on the purchase of a car. When you put money down on a car, it decreases the amount of your, your loan. However, processing fees, taxes, and tags are an addition to the price of the car. The same principles apply when purchasing a house. I am Larry Laws of First Home Alliance, and it's been a pleasure sharing with you our mission and highlighting people in our community that are making an impact. If you have questions about financial fitness or how we can help make your dream of homeownership a success, email your question to our inbox at help at firsthomealliance.org. Then tune in to our next show to see if your question was selected to be shared with our audience. You can easily get more information about our services by visiting us on the web at firsthomealliance.org. You may follow us on Facebook and other social media platforms. Thank you for watching today's segment of First Home Alliance and join us next time to rock your block. Glad to know that, you know, some of this stuff about like, I don't know, credit buying houses is like written down somewhere. A lot of the times it's always hearsay, like other friends or family members who have bought houses before, but they can never, you know, tell you legit what you need to get done and do before buying a house. I definitely think this class should be required for all first home buyers because um, a lot of times the real estate agent doesn't explain the process to you. So I think this is very important. Uh, it's from the credit up to receiving a loan and the most important thing is the process that you go through when you're buying the house and there are a lot of process which you don't have idea about that before you take this class. The speakers who came up and spoke about each section, they were very knowledgeable in their field and I felt like they it was relatable. They didn't just throw out a whole bunch of terms that went over my head, but they really explained it in in a way to where I understood it and I could even explain it to my children and it was even easier for me to take home and kind of remember and, and process and, and apply to my next steps. Um, the process was amazing. They start first with a class before even finding a lender or agent. I did all of that and I wasn't able to purchase and then I was like, oh, you know what, there's a lot of information I'm not aware of. Let me just start from the beginning. Put everything on hold. Piecing the information together because you've heard things from about the loans and about this and about the credit, but this is like a summary and it just gives a clear flow of where to go with what you have and kind of building up a plot. So that kind of gives me a whole picture of where I needed to go and how to get there. Thank you.